in this video, which comes directly uh, on the heels of the last video, I'm going to talk about figured base for the inversions of a triad. Last time we talked about root position, and we observed that if you have 5, 3 under any given note, that creates a triad in root position. Because if I count up those interval distances, a fifth and a third, if I count up a third, 1, 2, 3, it gives me this note. A fifth, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, gives me this note. And I end up with an FAC triad, which is generated from this starting note with 5 and 3 under it. We've got that from the last video, I hope, and we concluded then that 5-3 must equal root position, as indeed it does. What happens if instead we have first inversion or second inversion? Of course, our triads can be inverted into first inversion or second inversion. For first inversion, we find the figure 6-3, and again, there's no magic to this. I simply count up those distances. If I count up a third, 1-2-3, it gives me the note C. Remember, we are in bass clef because we're dealing with figured bass, which starts from a bass note. Or if I count up a sixth, one, two, three, four, five, six, I get the note F. That's the same three notes that I've got here. The difference is the lowest note is now the third of the chord. And when the third of the chord is the lowest note, the whole chord is in first inversion. So six, three must mean first inversion. Indeed it does. 6-3 equals first inversion. Again, just like root position, this does not tell me where to put those notes. I have to figure that out and I have to understand what it means to voice lead a first inversion chord. I have to understand the context in which I'm coming from, where I'm going to, all the things which are going to be important we're going to talk about when we talk about voice leading chords, moving from one chord to the next, to the next, to the next. That's all going to be important and in subsequent videos. But the concept is if you see 6-3 underneath a note, then that creates or generates a first inversion chord because the bass note is the third of the chord. Now, just as we can do that for a first inversion chord, so we can do it for a second inversion chord. And again, this is, this is not uh, particularly difficult. This is just counting up intervals. This time, we have a bass note, and we have the notes, the numbers, 6 and 4. And if I count up, 1, 2, 3, 4, gives me the note F. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, gives me the note A. Again, you count from the given note. You've got a bass note with figures. So you count up from there, and it gives you two other notes. When you take all those notes together, you can figure out a triad. And the triad, in this case, is the same triad. It's F, A, and C. It's the same triad that we've had for all of these. The difference is that this time the fifth of the chord is the lowest note. And because the fifth of the chord is in the bass, it must be in second inversion. And indeed it is. So now we can conclude that 6, 4 must equal second inversion. Again. The numbers just tell you to count interval distances, and then it gives you a set of three notes that you can use to create a chord. Those three notes will create a chord. That chord will probably, in this case, the chord will be a triad. In the next video, we'll look at the at doing exactly the same thing, but we'll be, we'll be creating seventh chords. It doesn't really matter. It's still just counting intervals, and it creates a chord. The specific type of chord, major or minor or augmented or diminished, that's determined by the key signature. And we always allow the key signature to play into the chord. But the figured bass is simply telling you two things. What notes you have, and by virtue of which note is in the bass, it tells you whether or not the chord is in root position, first inversion, or second inversion. So if you see 5-3, you know it's root position. If you see 6-3, you know it's first inversion. If you see 6-4, you know it's second inversion. That is essentially all you need to know about figured bass for triads. We're going to go on to look at seventh chords, and then there's going to be one more video talking about some of the conventions for how figured bass is used. So go on now, if you feel you understand this, go on now to the next video about figured bass for seventh chords. Thank you.